Daddy, can you teach me how to make some D? In this video, I'm going to break down how I made this model of Lil Penny using Nomad Sculpt and Blender. Hey, so when I was young, in the mid-90s, I used to love Penny Hardaway. And I had the starter jackets and the shoes and the jerseys. And I just loved watching them play. He also had these Nike commercials with a character called Lil Penny, which was voiced by Chris Rock. And I used to just love seeing those on TV when watching basketball when I was young. So I wanted to try to recreate this character in Blender. So in this video, I'm going to break down how I sculpted the head in Nomad Sculpt and then refined it in Blender, how I created the body, and then how I added the clothes, rigged it all up, and then posed it. So let's get started. So the first step in the process is sculpting in Nomad Sculpt. So I created a base mesh of a head a while back that just kind of has the general shape of a head that I usually start with when I start sculpting in Nomad. So about a year ago, I started using Nomad Sculpt and sculpting was something I wasn't really that great at and it's something that I'm still learning and trying to improve at. So that's why I try to do it as much as possible. But sculpting is one of those things that you just have to do over and over again to improve so there's really no shortcuts to it and even with my sculpting as you see it took me like a long time to get something that even looks remotely close to the character and you'll see through videos or if you read about sculpting that you want to kind of start and just get the basic shapes and when I first really started sculpting I had a bad habit of trying to add too many details to the model too early in the process and when you kind of read about sculpting or watch people who are really good at it on YouTube they always tell you to just get the basic shapes and your proportions right and then later on in the process is when you start to refine those details like the nose and the mouth and the ears so in my process with Nomad Sculpt Usually after a couple of hours when I get a somewhat recognizable shape going, I like to move it over to Blender because in Nomad Sculpt you can really only see one angle at a time. And when you move it over to Blender, you can open up multiple windows so I can look at it from the right side and the front, the top, the bottom, and also add in the HDRI for some basic lighting to kind of see how the shapes interact with that lighting. So it helps me to really start to dial in the character a lot more. So even in this part right here, you can start to see it starts to look a lot more like the character than it did when it was a Nomad Sculpt. Then once I get to a good place and it's starting to look more like the character, the next thing that I like to do is just add any facial hair that the character has as well as the eyebrows and the hair. So what I did was I just used a mask on the model and then I did a mask extract to extract those pieces out, added some thickness and turn those into his own mesh and then just change the color of the hair to whatever hair color it is. So in this instance, it's black. And that just kind of helps me to see what the final character could potentially look like when you have all of these elements in. And then I just go through and further refine with those elements in place. So for the original character of Lil Penny, he was built like an action figure and I wanted to mimic that look. So a while back I had actually purchased a model off the internet for 3D printing your own action figures. So I'm just using those different STL files here in Blender to build out the body of the character. So some of the parts like the, the biceps and the legs, I just kind of extended those out, scaled them out so that they were a little bit longer, but I'm just going through and importing each one of those pieces one by one and placing them where they would be on the body. So then I'm just adding the basic color so I can kind of visualize again what that's going to look like. And I'm using a mirror modifier to just bring in one side, place that piece, add the mirror modifier, and then go to the next piece. And I pretty much just repeated this process all the way through until I got the whole body in place. Once I had everything in place with the body, I then remeshed the head and the hair and I just went through and started refining the model to kind of make sure that my proportions were right. So originally I didn't have a side view of what the head looked like. And then I was watching one of the commercials and saw this part. So I did a screen capture of that. So I can kind of use that side view to make sure that it looked correct from all angles. So I'm just going through here and kind of bringing out the cheeks a little bit, bringing out that smile line making sure the back of the head is shaped right and the ears are proportional to the rest of the head based on the references that I found on the internet. Oh 
for the clothing I originally was working in Marvelous Designer placing the uniform on the character but I ended up landing on just using a 3D model that I found for free on the site of the jersey and the shorts. The proportions were pretty much already there and then using my grab brush to just move it around to make sure it wasn't intersecting anywhere with the body. And for the shoes, they were purchased from a site. I think I paid like 10 bucks for them. When I saw them, they were perfect. So I was like, no need to reinvent the wheel and might as well just help support other creators. Once I had my uniform placed over my model and the shoes and the socks on the model, the next thing I did was I took it into AccuRig to do the rigging. Now, it has a limit of 600,000 triangles in AccuRig, so I had to do some remeshing of the body and the jersey to get it under that limit. But once I did, it's pretty much straightforward. You drop the model in there, you move your different points around for where your hands, your fingers are, and then you just run that and it's gonna give you a rig with an armature on it. You're then gonna use the CC plugin for Blender and there's a tab on there under animation that will create a rigify rig for you. So when you click that, it will generate that whole rig for you and you have a rig character that you can work with. The next step was the texturing. So I went through and did a smart UV wrap on all of the pieces for the body. And I did most of this in Blender 4.2, but I was having some issues with the texturing on the jersey. So I took it into Blender 4.3 and I used the UV unwrapping in that version because they have a few new algorithms in there. I think one is called minimize stretching, which really worked well with the jersey. And another thing that I had to do was go through the model of the jersey and select all the pieces for the trim. And I actually used Smart UV Unwrap on those pieces. And then when I took it back into Marvelous Designer, everything was unwrapped pretty much exactly how I wanted it to be. So once I had all of my unwrapping done, it was just going through applying some textures to each of the sections to make it look like the Orlando Magic uniform of the 90s. Then the next thing I did was the jersey number and the logo and the name on the back of the jersey. So I used Substance Sampler for this and I had PNGs that I found for the Orlando logo online and I created the jersey number and name in Illustrator. And then when I took that in the Substance Sampler, I was able to add the embroidery option to it to make it look like it was embroidered onto the jersey and kind of give it an extra layer of depth and texture to it. And then once you have that material created, you can save it out and import it back into Substance Painter where you're able to apply it to whatever you're texturing. And once that's done, you just export those textures and then go over to Blender and apply all those textures onto the jersey. For my lighting, I've been trying to be consistent across projects. So I always start off with the same hex code for the blue backdrop. And then I append my lighting setup from another session that I've already created that I use pretty much on all my projects at this point. So once I have all of that in my scene, I then just go through and start adjusting the levels of the lights and the placement of them to get it to look how I want it to look. One thing I wanted to do was add a really bright white light behind him and, and boost up the intensity of that so it kind of gave you that white outline around the model. And finally, I posed the model. One thing I wanted to do with this project was to create a pose library. So I watched a couple quick tutorials on how to use it. It's, it's fairly easy to use. And then I just saved those poses so that I can recall them later. And my thinking behind this was in the future, if I wanted to do different renders, like change the clothing of it, but use some of the same poses, I could change the clothing of the model and then just go to this pose library and quickly recall those poses and have everything set up to create those renders more quickly. And that was pretty much the entire process of how I created this model of Little Penny. So in the future, I'm going to animate him and I may do additional videos on that process of creating the animations, but I, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and it was a good exercise in modeling and sculpting. So I appreciate y'all watching and if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And if you got something valuable from it, let me know in the comments. I really appreciate y'all checking out my work over the last year as I've been trying to make more of an effort to share my process and what I'm learning along the way. So I greatly appreciate it. Until next time, peace.